Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Corvette Stingray. And this particular trim that we're looking at is the 2LT Z51 convertible. Now the Corvette Stingray convertible starts under $60,000, but as tested we're looking at $75,560 with all of the options added. And yes, this is close to Z06 territory. There are all kinds of cool features in this vehicle. There are five different selectable drive modes, weather for when weather is happening, eco to save fuel and maximize use of cylinder deactivation, touring, sport, and track. Each of these modes can alter up to 12 parameters, steering effort, shift points, exhaust noise, electronic differential settings, suspension stiffness, stability and traction control, and on and on and on. Now if you put the drive mode in sport or track, this will open up additional exhaust valves which will make it significantly louder. In any of the other drive modes, these will remain closed. The difference is easily noticeable and you'll draw quite a bit more attention with the exhaust valves open. There's also a very clever tire temperature monitoring system which determines the temperature of the tires through various sensors and interpretations and alters the ABS, electronic differential, stability, and other systems according to the grip levels provided by the tires. Now one of the coolest options is this performance data recorder. This is an incredible system and is similar in nature to the overlays you'll see used in professional racing to better understand the driver's inputs and how to improve lap times. There are three overlay options, and it will record your speed, RPM, G-forces, a location-based map, lap times, and throttle and braking percentages. It even records audio. My only gripe is that it doesn't record in full 1080p, instead it's fixed at 720p. The cool features aren't over yet. Perhaps the most reasonably priced option package out there, especially for a sports car, for $5,000 the Z51 package offers a performance exhaust which adds 5 horsepower and 5 pound feet, a dry sump oil system, larger performance brakes with slotted rotors, a performance suspension with upgraded shocks, springs, and sway bars, different wheels and tires, performance gear ratios if you've selected the manual option, electronic limited slip differential, a rear differential cooling, transmission cooling, and an aero package. $5,000 well spent if you plan on taking the vet to a track. As you've probably already noticed, this is the convertible version we're checking out. The option will set you back $4,000. The soft top can be lowered in 21 seconds at speeds up to 30 miles per hour, giving your ears that much more V8 burble to soak up. Speaking of, under the hood is Chevy's LT1, a 6.2 liter V8 with overhead valves, variable valve timing, direct injection, and cylinder deactivation. When cruising on the highway or when you're light on the gas, it can run on just four cylinders, improving fuel economy. The car is rated 16 miles per gallon in the city, 29 on the highway, and in my own testing I achieved 28.3 miles per gallon on my highway-based course. The engine produces 460 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 465 pound-feet at 4,600 RPM, each five higher than base thanks to the optional exhaust. Now, checking out the cabin before we go for a test drive, uh, as far as visibility is concerned, out the front is fairly narrow and to the sides is narrow as well. And looking out the rear, it's a pretty small window. Uh, and in fact, when you are looking out the rear windshield uh, using the mirror, what you will notice is when you're driving on most roads, you don't even see the road behind you. You just kind of see the cars and uh, about halfway up the car and above. Uh, so rear visibility with the convertible top up isn't that great. Definitely better in the coupe version with the hard top. Uh, but that said, you know, once you take the convertible down, you've got all kinds of visibility. So if you live in an area where you can take advantage of that, visibility is fantastic once you take that down. And checking your blind spot to the left, you're kind of all blocked up right here. So you're going to want to make sure you have your mirrors adjusted properly so you can see who's in your blind spot and what's going on to your left. Okay, now as far as the cabin itself, uh, these seats are pretty comfortable. Leather seats, heated and cooled, uh, and you also have side bolster adjustment as well as lumbar adjustment, so they're electronically adjustable. And as far as leg room, uh, it's fairly narrow in this cabin, but that said, you have plenty of space for your legs. My knees don't come into contact with anything. I've got plenty of space down there, and I'm about six foot one. Headroom is fine as well, even with the convertible and being six one. Now, as far as these internal systems, uh, everything for the most part, very intuitive, very simple use. You've got your cruise control uh, and some different menus on the steering wheel as well as paddle shifters which rotate with the steering wheel. You've got all your traditional apps and uh, things like that on your navigation system. Simple to use climate control. Uh, so no complaints overall with the cabin. And then you've got this little dial right here to change which mode you're in. Okay, so let's go ahead and take it for a quick test drive. 
Now you do have a heads up display so you can display different kinds of information up there. Uh, it's got some different settings. It's cool because uh, you can have one that shows you a uh, live accelerometer so you can see what g-forces are going around a corner and not have to take your eyes you know off the road. You can still be looking at the road and see what g-forces you're producing and you know you've also got a tack up there, speedometer, and it tells you which gear you're in. Now this has the automatic eight-speed transmission and overall I do like it. I've been reading a lot about it and most people seem to like it and when I was first driving it uh, you know just kind of puttering around town I didn't think it was that quick uh, it doesn't seem to shift all that accurately and sometimes you know it does have a little bit of a joltiness to it but what I found out is that if you really hammer onto it you know if you're driving eight tenths or above then it starts to act much more responsively and it's very quick to shift uh, very fast acting and so when you really are going all out uh, I, I do like the transmission it does seem to shift pretty quick especially for it being a planetary automatic gearbox rather than a dual clutch transmission so somewhat of a sacrifice in shift speed but overall it seems to do okay so right now I have it in touring mode and you'll definitely notice a difference if you switch over to the sport or the track mode as far as how stiff the ride is so this has a magnetic suspension which will adjust depending on which mode you're in and it's definitely noticeable it's a lot more comfortable in touring uh, than it is in sport or track and as far as performance so you have some of these exhaust valves closed in the back uh, when you're in touring so it's not quite as loud not quite as obnoxious doesn't draw quite as much attention but when you put your foot down it still has plenty of torque to deliver and then you can put that over into track mode uh, if that wasn't quite loud enough for you or sport mode and it'll open up those exhaust valves and so then when you put your foot down and let me downshift a few times it down into third, drop down into second. <laughs> Just an unbelievable amount of torque. So going in the corners here, very flat, very minimal body roll, and so much power to deliver. So there, I was kind of hard on the brakes. The downshift wasn't all that quick, uh, but you know, I didn't need it to be that fast, honestly, because I wasn't on the power that fast. And coming out of the corner here, we're doing about 0.6 Gs, so nothing too heavy. It can certainly handle much more than this. But just unbelievable torque when you put your foot down. Uh, for some perspective, if you were to compare this to the Subaru STI which I drive, this is a lighter car with 155 more horsepower and 170 more pound-feet of torque and way more torque down low. Now as far as the steering, the brake pedal and the accelerator pedal feel, starting with the throttle pedal, you know, depending on which mode you're in, it changes. So in the touring or modes before that, weather and eco, uh, it makes the car kind of feel kind of heavy because it requires a lot of pedal uh, effort, a lot of, you have to push that pedal down quite a bit in order to get the vehicle to go. Versus if you have it in sport or traction, it seems to be a little bit more lenient with the power and so you don't have to press the pedal as much and you get into the torque. As far as the brake pedal feel, the travel is actually pretty short uh, and it's pretty firm pedal feel, but overall I really like it. it has good modulation it's very easy to control so overall I have no complaints with that and finally moving on to the steering you've got a decent weight to it you know a little bit heavier than most which I do like it also changes the amount of effort required depending on which mode you're in and overall I do like the steering feel it seems to have a good ratio it does change the ratio as you're uh, in the different modes and different speeds and also it seems to be very responsive you know the second you start turning the wheel you get immediate turn in you don't have this delay which you can find in some vehicles. So overall, brake pedal, throttle pedal, and steering all have a very refined feel, very easy to control, and that helps you feel more confident while you're driving this, especially when you're pushing it fairly hard. Okay, so we got to do a 0 to 60, of course, and for obvious reasons, I have the top down. That's because I want to get the weight towards the back and uh, lower the center of gravity, right? Anyways, it's because it sounds cooler. I've got it in track mode. We've got it in this performance driving mode, which allows for launch control. So we're going to straighten up put her foot down hard on the brake and the gas, and then let go and see what happens. Okay. <laughs> Phenomenally quick. Now I ran two separate zero to 60 runs, this one just over four seconds, and another at about 3.8 seconds.
So obviously wind noise is gonna be a bit loud with the top down, but I did this run with the top up and it still was a bit noisy. You still have a bit of road noise and a bit of wind noise with the convertible top up. You're looking at about 80 to 81 decibels, which is definitely higher than some of the vehicles I've tested out there, uh, most of them in fact. So you are gonna sacrifice a little bit of noise with this convertible. Overall, it really is an impressive vehicle. I've driven one of these on a track. I drove the seven speed manual with the hardtop and it was phenomenal. I was able to control it. That was my first time out on a track and I found it very predictable. It has an immense amount of grip. Like it's unbelievable how well you can corner with this. And you know, driving this on a public road, it really doesn't do it justice. It is definitely crossed over that line of where, you know, the maximum amount of fun you can have in this can't be done safely on public roads. So it really is, uh, really well made for a track go out there rip around in it especially with the z51 package which keeps all your fluids cool uh, for a very you know reasonable cost you've got bigger brakes you've got the performance data recorder so you can record your lap times absolutely phenomenal vehicle i've loved driving it if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below thanks for watching there's a prius in front of me offsetting my carbon footprint thank you prius